So I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I have a really hard time following through on a project. And I never really understood why. And then a while ago, I was listening to an audiobook and I came across this just incredible little story that absolutely blew my mind. I was just like, how can something so simple be so profound? It was really cool. And then I completely forgot about it for a while, which kind of sucked. But then I remembered it again. So here we are. <laughs> We're all good. And this little story I'm talking about comes from the book Think Like a Monk by Jay Shetty. And it's placed in the dead center of his training to become a monk. He's walking through the grounds with a senior monk there. And as they go, the senior monk is pointing out the achievements of some of the other monks that they pass. He points out one that can meditate for eight hours straight. And then a little later on, he mentions another one that, you know, fasts for very extended periods of time. And then they come to a little spot and he, he points to a guy that's sitting underneath a tree. And the senior monk turns to Jay and he says, do you see that man right there? And he says, he can recite every single verse in the scriptures by memory. And Jay is just like blown away, right? He's like, whoa, like I wish I could do that. And the next moment is very pivotal because the senior monk turns to Jay and he says, do you wish that you could do that? Or do you wish that you could learn to do that? And Jay is like a little confused. He's like, what do you mean? And here the senior monk says, think about your motivations. He's like, do you want to memorize all of the scriptures because it would be an impressive achievement? Or do you want to have the experience of having studied it? In the first one, you are only looking at the outcome. And in the second, you're curious about what you may learn through the experience. And Jay's response to this in the book is just great. <laughs> uh, it's it 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 very entertaining. He's just like blown away by it. But he goes on then to expand on this and talk about how it, it's very fascinating how, you know, he was raised to, to think and, and believe that desiring only the outcome was a reasonable request. But here the, the monk is, is challenging all of that. And he's, he's, you know, questioning Jay on, on why he wanted to do what was necessary to reach that outcome. And for me, I was driving whenever I, I, I was listening to this audiobook, and I just like paused the audiobook for a while and I just thought about that for a while. Like that, that very simple little story is so impactful because it's like, okay, you know, how, what kind of effect would this actually have on my life if I learned to desire the experience and the process of learning something instead of only the outcome? I don't know if this is the way I was raised or taught, but like I was always, very focused on the outcome of getting through it, you know, whether it be school, um, learning a new skill or um, what have you, I was very focused on what's going to happen after I'm done with this. And instead of trying to enjoy the, the like the process of it. And I think that's why I landed on making videos, because that was something where I found I could thoroughly enjoy the process almost as much or more than the finished product. But this thing of being taught to focus on the outcome versus the experience is one of the main factors, I believe, in why it's so hard to follow through. And I don't know, my mind just started running with this of all the ways that we could use only half of the equation. Like take something like, like goals, for example. Goals are so impactful on someone's life if they're trying to achieve something and in directing you know, where they're going. The The thing with goals though is that there again, it's, it's focused on what the end result is. What do you want to accomplish when you're done? What, where do you want to end up? And that's great, but I feel like that's only like half of the equation. The other half is, is like backtracking to say, okay, now how do I get there in a way that is enjoyable for me? Like, how do I, how do I make the process something that I can enjoy? And that's one thing I liked about the book Goals by Brian Tracy is that he, he, teaches you to look farther out, you know, okay, here's what I want to accomplish. But then he also takes it deeper of saying, okay, let's backtrack and, and reverse engineer this to figure out how you can find enjoyment the whole way there and not only when you accomplish it. Another fantastic example of this is uh, Jocko Willink, where he, I was listening to podcasts by him and he would tell the story of how uh, one of the men under his command would, would come to him and th th there'd be this problem or, or something you know, bad had happened or like a change in plans or, or something that just kind of threw a wrench in the gears. And every time he, that this guy would come to Jocko, he would, you know, tell him like, hey, you know, this is what's happening. Here's the problem. And first word out of Jocko's mouth would just be, he would look at the guy and he'd be like, good, let's, let's do this. Like, let's like, this is good. It's forcing us to work outside of our comfort zone or, or adapt. 
And <laughs> and eventually this this guy would come to Jocko and he'd be like, I already know what you're gonna say. And Jocko's like, what am I gonna say? He's like, you're just gonna say good. And I think the key thing with that is it shows that Jocko is digging into the process, enjoying the the struggles in the moment, in the process, in the experience, and, and appreciating the growth that happens from that. And you see this because, you know, most people when there's a problem, they they like attack the problem and they they're like, okay, how do I get rid of this problem as quick as possible? to get everything back to normal, to the, to the way it was. I love that story from Jocko and also the story in the book. And I think the reason I forgot it is because, you know, it's kind of like breathing or brushing your teeth. You don't have to like think about it every time. Like it just be kind of becomes a part of who you are. I'd like to give you two examples from my own life. And the first one is skydiving. And uh, my, my brother can testify to this. <laughs> um, how like he had, he had no intentions, maybe a few, but he almost had no intentions of actually going and following through and getting his skydiving license. And, you know, it was kind of all that, you know, oh yeah, you know, someday I'm gonna do this, and yeah, it's gonna be great, and I'll talk, right? And this is kind of what the monk was talking about with the, the person focusing on the only the outcome and what they're gonna gain from that. And here in a month or two, I plan on skydiving with him. And so there's, there's two ways of looking at this, right? So like I could look at it as, okay, you know, afterward, I'm gonna tell everybody about this. It's gonna be great. I'm gonna live out of this amazing experience that I just had. Um, you know, I'm gonna make videos on this, like everything I learned and all this stuff. Like I could look at that, like that's the end result of what's gonna happen. And I could go skydiving just for that. I'm not saying that that's wrong, but I'm saying I would get so much more out of it if I take the, the experience of the moments beforehand and the moments right as it's happening and, and like what's what's happening inside of my mind, what am I learning, what's the experience itself teaching me? Not just, okay, I'm gonna muscle my way through this so I can plop, get the end result. For me, most of my reasoning is like, I wanna see if I can push myself through this, uh, through this experience and, and what I can learn through it and the process of it. And that's what Reagan talks about it in getting a skydiving license is like, in order to get a, become a good skydiver, you have to show up and you have to do the work in like the process of it. And and one thing he said is like, if he only wanted to do it just for the cool like accomplishment of it, he's like, he would have burnt out a long time ago. Talk is very cheap. And I think the people that are, that are focusing on only the outcome, they tend to just talk a lot. They want the outcome without actually putting in any of the work. The second experience I wanna talk about is memorizing. So recently I stumbled across the, the art of, it's actually a sport, I didn't realize this, but the art of having a good memory. And they're called mental athletes and they, they memorize incredible, you know, strings of numbers and words and all this stuff. And I was just very fascinated with that. And I was like, huh, like that feels like a really good area of my life that I could improve. I decided I wanted to learn more about it. And I was like, okay, how can I, how can I develop a good memory for myself and, and hold on to these memories that I have? As you can see, there's, there's almost always two ways of approaching this, where I can come at it with, you know, the desired outcome of what will happen afterward, like what, how, you know, it's gonna be so great once I can do this, and, or I can come at it with the, the curiosity and the, the desire to learn in the experience and in the process of it. And it's remarkably easy to watch someone memorize a deck of cards in you know, less than a minute and fantasize about like, wow, like when I can do that or if I ever can, could, could do that, like people would go crazy. You know, I could do it in front of my family or like in front of my friends and they'd all just be blown away. Like I would be known for having this skill among my, my circles of being able to memorize a deck of cards in less than a minute. Like, wow, that'd be amazing. Until you begin realizing that that skill specifically, you know, takes several months and several hundred hours and dedicated practice. Like the like cost benefit ratio <laughs> begins tipping in the other direction where the cost is it's much more significant than just that that moment that you're envisioning. And when that happens, people have, you know, a couple different responses. They either quit because it's too much work or, you know, they spend all their time fantasizing about it and how amazing this would be and they never actually do any of the work or they dig deeper into the experience and learning through the process and they fall in love with that process. And I've read a number of books on memory and having, you know, un unlimited memory, right? Because we we technically have unlimited memory. And, you know, it's it's interesting how almost all of the the memory um, athletes that start out, they <laughs> they begin with that first end goal in mind where they see something happening like, "Wow, like I want to do that." And they begin but like almost instantly they just fall in love with the competition of it and they fall in love with the the process and the achievement of the experience and they're just like 
What, like, I didn't even know my mind was capable of this. What else am I capable of doing? And they just dig deeper and deeper and deeper into that experience. That's usually what sustains these people that have very um, elaborate memories. So has this actually changed my approach to life? Absolutely. Going through life focused on the experience of it versus just the outcome, um, it changes your, it changed my entire focus of, of problems, especially. So here recently I was assistant dean at a Bible school and my other deans probably thought I was crazy most of the time, but you know, when something would happen, something bad would happen and you know, it would upend, this, you know, there's all this upheaval of, you know, uncertainty and, and just a lot to work through. And like, we've never experienced this before. This is crazy. My first reaction to all of that was like, whoa, like I can't believe I've been given this opportunity to grow through this experience versus like the, the, the flip side of that would be the outcome of like, oh my goodness, let's smush this down get everything back to normal so that it's all okay. Like that would have been the extreme opposite where I used to fall into that and it just changed my whole perspective of everything. And, and I learned so much more and it can be very tempting to try to to you know, just focus on that outcome of, of especially when it deal when when things are in it like hard things happen in life. You begin like this journey onto a very difficult road, um, and and it's it's easy to look at the end and be like, all right, let's just get to the end of it and be done. But there's so much more rewarding I found when you can focus on the here and now, the process, the journey of it, and and not necessarily enjoy the like what's happening because sometimes really bad stuff happens, and that's you can't really just flip a switch and, and enjoy that. But you can choose to appreciate the growth that you are experiencing and the lessons that you are learning. Another example of this, like just the other day, was uh, my broski at church was like, hey, can you be usher for me? And I was like, uh, like, I don't wanna be usher. I, I've never done it before, this is weird. Uh, like what, like, I, it was uncomfortable, I didn't wanna do it. And I caught myself and I was like, hold on a second. I'm just looking at the outcome here. I'm just trying to get through this so that everything can go back to normal and I can have my comfortable life and everything will be fine. And it's just this tiny little example where I'm like, no, like I'm gonna just own this. It's gonna be great. I'm gonna make it awesome. And you know, I gained a new appreciation for that role and for you know what that person has to deal with that I never knew before. And I was like, huh, that's cool. And I wouldn't have realized that without that mindset. To live intentionally, we have to dig deeper into the why behind what we want. This requires us to pause and think about not only why we want something, but also who we are and who we need to become in order to gain that and whether or not that person appeals to us. And there's a statement in the book that I think sums this up really well. And it says, most people are accustomed to uh, looking for answers. Monks focus on the questions. And you know, when we're trying to dig down to the root desire, the best question to start with is just why? And and why do you want to do that? Why do you want to become this person that then has this skill? Remember, talk is cheap. And if that's all you do, then it probably means that you only want to experience the outcome of the impressive achievement. 